What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Today we're gonna to be going over some things that I have been working on so far this off season, gonna to continue to work on. I'm gonna show you the team grade assistant, the trade calculator, um, what the rankings look like right now, um, a research project that I'm gonna be working on, or I guess have worked on. Uh, just get your thoughts on how all of these are looking right now, any features you guys want added. Um, I'm gonna have you guys play around with them if you'd like. So the team grade assistant and the trade calculator are both in the description down below. You guys can go to the Google sheet there. You can play around with them. I want to know your thoughts on when you test things out, find bugs in them, because I'm sure there are things that are wrong right now, and let me know what you think. Also, if there's anything else. So if there are tools that I go over in this video that you like, but then there's something else that I didn't go over that I haven't mentioned that you want to see implemented, because you think it'd be like a cool idea, let me know and I will try to build that moving forward. Um, one thing to note, when you go to this page, I recommend just pulling this up as you're watching the video. When you go here, so we're team grade assistant right now, is the same thing as underdog. You guys can't edit the sheet that you bring up, but all you have to do is file, make a copy, save it wherever you want. I recommend just doing like the OneDrive or doing uh, my drive for like Google Drive, things like that, but share it wherever you want, name it whatever you want, and then you can edit your version, okay? So it's a very easy workaround. Obviously, I can't have you editing this one because then people are gonna be downloading your stuff and it's not gonna work out. But this one is super simple. It's the easiest one to go over. Team Grade Assistant is just gonna be a way for you guys to see what the grade is for your draft. So I get that comment all the time that's like, can you grade this draft? Can you grade that draft? Well, a lot of that's very subjective. This is a way to put numbers to it and say, okay, here's the grade for your draft based off of my value grades. It only really works with that. You can't really use like, you can't like download someone else's rankings and use that. It has to be my value grades. Um, just how I like develop them, how I moved into this. Um, and it's gonna tell you not only what your draft grade is, um, what your strength is, but like your biggest weakness. And it's gonna really like, obviously like biggest weakness you can see here, but it's, it's pretty obvious, like just look at this section. It's gonna tell you like relatively how strong or weak on you. And my favorite part about this is, so I put in one of my drafts from last year. Um, it was a 12 team league. Um, Two running back, two wide receivers, two flex spots. Um, and you can see wide receiver here, weak, right? But then you look at the draft and you're like, well, Nick, you took a wide receiver. What round is this? Like five? Round five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, and 12. So I think a lot of like calculators will tell you that you are strong now at wide receiver because you've got a ton of them. But mine takes into account no they're like you don't have an elite one it's going to give you bonus points for having a really high end at a position so if you have christian mccaffrey and then you abandon you're going to have a really good grade for running back if you don't abandon you can have an even better grade but this is just a way for you to do a bunch of mock drafts put your mock drafts in here and just see oh i got to a 93 in this one Ooh, this strategy got me a 78 that actually be really low i think most of the scores are generally in like the 70 to 95 range. I guess I haven't played around with it at all, um, but you guys can play around with it. Let me know what your scores were for your drafts. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's very, very simple. You literally just start typing in a name, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, everything's going to pop up. You find the name, you see how everything changes. Like it's, it's pretty simple. Obviously my team grade goes to a 97 because Christian McCaffrey is better than Alvin Kamara, but that is it. That is all you have to do there. Um, I guess one other thing is, so how this is going to work during the season, at least right now how it's going to work is you would basically copy the rankings. so this is going to be set up perfectly with the rankings you'll go to the website you'll click the copy button for whatever your rankings are so if you are in a 10 team standard or a 16 team ppr league whatever your rankings are you're going to click that come over here paste it in everything's going to update and then all you have to do is fill in this so you have to say oh i'm actually in a league with one starting running back and three starting receivers, every single thing in the value will change based off of what you put into this yellow. Um, this won't actually change because I'm gonna have you guys input that. Um, I was gonna pull it, but it just, it makes it too complicated. So very, very simple. You guys just update this, you'll pull in the rankings. You can't change that right now because, I, I guess you can. You can just go to the website and like paste in 
but I don't know that the paste is going to work for the website right now. Um, I would say for the purposes of testing it out, just use what it has here, play around with it. It's going to be very close for now. And then once we get, of course, uh, 2022 rankings up, then you'll be able to use this for your exact ranking. But just kind of play around with it, uh, see what team grades you can get. This column's kind of irrelevant. It's just for you. It's just to be like, oh, uh, if you see like a 25 here in the fourth round, it means you reach. Like It's just a way for you to gauge if you're reaching or not. This column has absolutely nothing to do with um, the like the value grades. This column has nothing to do with the value grades. So if you're looking back at the draft and you don't actually know what overall spot you drafted a player at, it doesn't really matter. That's not going to go into positional strength. Um, if you happen to have gotten Christian McCaffrey in the eighth round versus the first round, that, that doesn't matter. It's just looking at how strong your overall draft was. And if you want to see reaches and stuff, you can look there. So that's that. Again, play around with it. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know things you'd want to see implemented. I can add things. I can take things away. This is the main screen you'd be looking at. And then, of course, remember putting in everything there. Next up, we have the trade calculator. Works in a very similar way. Have to be using my value grades on the site, um, but it's kind of the same thing. You input here, what is your league, so it can calculate value. Um, this will be the dump page. You'll dump in whatever rankings you're going to be using. And then you've got the actual calculator. Now, this is kind of like two things in one on this page, so I want to kind of show you. First up, these things over here, your team and your opponent's team. You can use this. Um, to kind of like go through teams and determine what like strengths and weaknesses are. So you would basically type in both teams and then you look at this whole section here and you're going to say, okay, I am good at tight end plus 124% running back. I'm good at hundred percent would be like average. So you're a little bit better than average at tight end, a little bit better at average than running back, basically average at wide receiver, worse at quarterback, not great flex and depth okay that basically is how you'd be looking at that there and then you look at another team you'd be like oh okay this team is bad at tight end good at wide receiver and you just kind of like go through there it's the same thing we talk about in season you're always just searching for a team you drafted a ton of wide receivers they drafted no receivers well now it's much more valuable for you to trade your receiver to a team that has no receivers right if you're looking through this and you guys have strengths and weaknesses the exact same positions, it's probably not a good team to engage in trades with. So that's kind of about finding a team that's good to trade with. Obviously, this might be a good match. Maybe they don't want Dallas Goddard as their tight end. You have Mark Andrews. You can do a trade where you swap the tight ends and then you get an upgrade somewhere else. The actual trade calculator is right here. So once you find a team you want to trade for, you can go into here and kind of play around with things. But all you would do is type names in, right? Do you have Patrick Mahomes instead? P-A-T, the, uh, what's it called? Keyboard, keyboard's way over there, so I have to reach sometimes. Do you have Patrick Mahomes instead? You can just type different things in. Right now, this is working off of the, I don't even know, like week 15 or 16 rest of season rankings. I honestly don't even remember what week it was. This would, to start the year, well, to start the year would just be the, the rankings at the end of the season but then it's just going to be based off of the rest of season rankings so this is not like a looking forward thing this is not a dynasty calculator uh this is not a calculator for if you're doing a draft right now for 2022 this is working off like i think it's like week 15 or 16 rest of season rankings so understand uh understand that but it's very very simple to use these are the players you're getting these are the players you're losing type in the names over here type in the names over here, it's going to tell you who's winning the trade. So right now your opponent was winning the trade uh, and the difference is like pretty close. I would say anything under like 0 0.5, it's it's a tie, like it's a very fair trade. Um, and then this is what you can add. So you can say, oh, well, if you want to now be winning the trade by this much, you can add these players. So you can go through and do it that way. You could also use it kind of like um, if you guys play uh, like 2K or you play Madden and maybe you take this away, right? And you say, well, I have like, I don't know, I want to trade away. I want to trade away Pittman, right? It'll give you some sort of suggestions. Now, this is something you have to work through too. Um, what it's basically doing, this is basically why you don't see uh, very good options here. 
or actually, okay, I put it under the receive. What? Okay, that's actually a good thing to, to point out. Okay, what you saw pop up right now is what you'd have to add to the trade in order to like make it even, basically. So like if you added Daniel Jones, he's such a negative that now the trade is even, if that makes sense. It's like a weird way of thinking about it. But basically, you want to trade for Pittman, right? These are players of like comparable value. If you want to win the trade by 1.5, you could ask for David Montgomery, right? So you're losing Pittman, you're trading away from your team, you add David Montgomery, you've now won that trade. You then look at the team that has David Montgomery, see if you can kind of find a trade for that. Or maybe you want to swap and get Mike Evans. Obviously, like those two deals are probably not getting done. You can imagine that gaining, you know, a good amount of value, that's not very fair. Obviously, Pittman's the tie, but if you want to try and gain a little bit more value and get DJ Moore a little bit more and gain uh, Ginger Hopkins when, of course, he was healthy. Um, so, yeah, that's basically how this would work. Again, players you lose, players you receive, put them in, see who wins the trade. It's very, very simple. And up here, you're just using it for figuring out what the strengths and weaknesses of your team are versus your opponent. So those are two tools I want you guys to test out. If you have any other tools, please let me know um, what they are, how you want me to build them, uh, why they can maybe be beneficial. Other thing. Uh, this isn't actually a page you guys need to go for. This is just like me visually showing you. You don't you don't need to go to this page. Um, the other project I'm working on, um, I feel like you guys have heard me talk about this one. Um, basically, we're looking at draft strategies. So I have pulled a lot for 2021. I'm still working my way back. It just takes a very, very long time to scrape the data. Um, but I have everything built out right now, only for 10 team, but it's a very, very small fix to get it to 12 team. Uh, basically, I'm just going to have to have my computer running until the start of like the fantasy season. Like Basically, it's just going to have to run this whole time. It takes such a long time to scrape through all the leagues. Um, but I'm looking through a ton of leagues that happen in every year and saying, okay, what is the win rate of teams that drafted running back, running back in 2015 versus 2016 versus 2017? And over you know those years as an average. So if we can look through thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of leagues and determine, oh, it looks like teams that drafted wide receiver, wide receiver had a higher win rate than starting off running back, running back in five of the last seven years. Maybe that's something that we can consider. Now that was, I made that up. Like again, I have a lot of numbers for 2021. I have very few numbers for any other years. So maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not the case. I don't know. But that's the sort of thinking, right? Is if we consistently see different strategies winning at a higher or lower rate, that's very, very important information for us. Did um, running back, running back fail this season because a ton of high-end running backs got hurt and so wide receiver ended up being great? But if you look back in different years when there weren't mass injuries at the position, it was actually better. Like it, it just helps us get a much better story and use that moving forward instead of just looking at this year, just looking at another year and actually getting numbers, right? Because last year we did the video where I was going over your teams and trying to find like, oh, this strategy worked for this team, this worked for another team. Well, if we can look through, you know, combine through all the years, like half a million teams, well, that's going to be much better than just looking at a handful that you guys send in. So that's the thinking there. Again, um, look at the look at this column. Uh, hero running back, RB0, wide receiver 0, um, taking a like, even split, like running back, then wide receiver, then quarterback, then tight end, like just in some sort of order there. Taking quarterback early, quarterback late, two quarterbacks late versus one quarterback early, like all the different strategies. I can look at all of that. But if you have one that's not listed here, that you're like, oh, Nick, what about this strategy? I can probably find the answer to that, especially because, I mean, once the data is gathered, it's just about you telling me what the strategies are you want me to look up. I think I have a pretty good list going here. But again, if I miss something or there's something else you want, it's very simple for me to just add that in and get numbers for that as well. Um, so this will be like a page on the site. And be able to go to and see exactly what the win rates for all these different things were by year and as an average over the last seven years. Uh, and maybe we can do some sort of um, like really, really good analysis 
as far as that's concerned. The final thing we'll look at here is the rankings. I just want you guys to let me know um, what things you want to change. So right now I, I don't have the change column in. I'm not 100% sure it's going to be added in just with how I'm going to do the rankings. But one big change to the rankings this year is t league size. So now not only will we be able to say I am in a standard super flex league, right, and have rankings for that, you'll be able to say I am in a 14 team standard super flex league, and there will be a specific ranking set for you. So you will be able to do league size. I know I made videos last year being like, hey, this is kind of how things change. Now you'll know exactly based off of the math how um, positions are different, how rankings changed if you are in an 18 league versus a 12 team league versus a 16 team league because the rankings will change. I don't think there's a site out there that's actually doing this, um, but I wanted to implement it. I already have. Um, this is basically, I mean, these, these are the rankings uh, from last year. Again, I don't have 2022 rankings. I will not have 2022 rankings in the short term. Um, but this is how the new rankings would look based off of the numbers from last year. So these are all the exact numbers from last year. Um, but you're going to see differences. Like right now, I just pulled up 18 PPR. Um, but this is how things are going to look um, based off of what they would be this year, if that makes any sort of sense. So the projections, the value, all those are the exact same that they were. Um, this is just how it's going to look. And let me know about columns. Um, do you not like the RB0 columns? RB0 is basically like these are good players to draft if you drafted a bunch of like wide receiver stuff early. So it was like Javonta Williams, uh, Chase Edmonds, Kareem Hunt, Henderson, guys like that. Um, do you think that makes it too confusing? Best values was basically like, who do I have ranked way ahead of where they're going on average? Basically, it's like taking value to like the extreme. These are players you really want to be getting on your team. Do all these things like, are they too confusing for you? Risk rating, just how risky are these players? Obviously, you know, projection value. Are they a rookie? Do you want fewer columns? Do you want more columns? Do you want the same number of columns, but you don't care about rookie? You want that to be something else? Let me know. I can probably add it in. Again, I'm not 100% sure I can have change up there. Again, I know that was a really, really good column, basically saying over the last month, how have how has this player's ranking changed? Because of how I'm doing it now, that is very, very difficult to implement. I mean, I've got a billion rankings pages here. Um, and before I was just copying, pasting things over. That is not going to be the case this year. It's going to be like automatically filtered, updated, posted to the site and everything. Um, that's going to allow me to update the rankings more, keep them more up to date. Um, also, you'll be able to see like the round. So before it was all based off of a 10 team league. Now the round is specific to yours. So it's an 18 league. You know, it's going to be specific 1.08, 2.01. Like you're going to see it exactly. Um, yeah, let me know if you want things um, added in here. Um, basically, Instead of having this, I'll just have a change log. So there'll be, whoa, uh, yeah, remind me tomorrow. Um, there'll be a change log that's like, oh, in this last month, I've moved this player up because of this and this player down because of this. So you'll be able to go in and just see, um, not specifically the number there for the change, but you'll be able to see I boosted and um, took down these players' projections because of these factors. So you'll still be able to see who is changing. But again, let me know if there's anything on here you want to see and that should be it for this one again the goal of this video is to show you these tools have you guys tell me what other tools you want to see um, have you tell me how you'd like to see changes and upgrades to the tools that you're seeing now and again the trade calculator and the like team grade calculator you can just click the link in the description and you can play around with those let me know any bugs let me know things you want to see upgraded um, and then any content as well. So that's the last thing. What sort of content do you want to see on YouTube from like now until May, until like May 1st? Because we all know once May 1st happens, like you're getting the same exact content you got before. You're getting, the, we'll mix in mock drafts and stuff, but like you're getting more of the mock drafts, some underdog content, um, just breakdowns of different players, comparisons, things like that, like you saw last summer. Uh, but what do you want to see from like now until then? 
I'm obviously spending all of my time developing these tools, creating this ranking set, um, doing this research project. But if there are other research projects you want to see, if there are other tools you want to see, if there's other content like video wise you want to see, let me know and I'll try my best to do all of it. So that'll do it for this one. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting the like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.